Hello everyone, my name is Stephen Owens and I'm a Senior Education Policy Analyst at the Georgia Budget and Policy Institute and wanted to talk real quick about the budget, things that we're following. As many people know, last summer, Georgia legislature passed a budget with about a billion dollars in cuts to the public education system. In the amended budget, um, the legislature was able to restore about 60% of those cuts which means that we have around $400 million in cuts moving forward if the governor's proposed budget is implemented. What that would mean if passed is that over 20 years, the state of Georgia will have um, met its minimum obligation to fund schools twice um, over about a generation. So that is something that we continue to watch because these have consequences in schools. It has consequences for staffing, the opportunities provided to students. And that's harder, especially for school districts that can't supplement their budget with high property tax values. Um, and in rural, smaller schools that depend more on state dollars. There is a significant amount of federal money that's provided, but that's really meant to mitigate the harm of the pandemic because of all the additional costs that come with trying to implement schools during COVID-19. So we really don't need to think of that as uh, plugging budget holes, and it's specifically not meant for that. That is for these unique costs, and it's still the state's responsibility to have a commitment to public education. One thing that we were excited to see in the amended budget is an increase of $40 million for student transportation. That's something that Georgia Budget and Policy Institute has pushed for for a long time, an increased commitment to public transportation. Um, that amount uh, had stayed pretty even from 2002, 2002 until this past year, even as enrollment went up, the cost of transporting students has gone up. So we are happy to see that inclusion and hope to see uh, more dollars for transportation for school districts. Um, it's also important to note that there is a, a leak in the bathtub, so to speak, that Georgia sends millions of dollars to private schools every year through vouchers. And currently there are three bills making their way through each chamber to increase the amount of funds meant for public schools and instead to go to private schools. And without going into any of the, the, the details on these, fully implemented, we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars uh, that would go to private schools with no real accountability. We don't know how the students are doing once the money goes there. We don't know um, if these schools are discriminating based on sexual orientation, based on, we know they're discriminating based on income. So these are, these are things that always worry me because it continues to add up every single year. What begins as a small program meant for a targeted number of students is then expanded to another group of students. We see this in other states until the expansion is so much that it erodes any support in the legislature to fully fund the one thing that they're required to do in public education, which is a public system of schools for all children um, that, that won't discriminate based on a child's ability, based on his, his or her ability to speak English, um, all these protections that we fought so long for. And so that is something that we continue to advocate against uh, and we'll do so up into crossover day and afterwards.